It started out as something from popular fashion and then later took on a deeper spiritual meaning. The clerical collar, also called the Roman collar, a white band that goes around the neck of a priest or clergy members of some Christian congregations, remains one of the most distinctive elements of clerical vesture. It speaks more loudly than any words and clearly identifies clergy members in a crowd of any kind or size. However, it is a rather strange piece of clothing. Where did it come from? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and upon the authority vested in me, I do hereby install you as a minister of the New Testament Assembly. Preach the word in season and out of season, so that when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a unfading crown of glory. It wasn't until the 12th and 13th centuries that priests adopted the Roman cassock as a distinctive piece of clothing that visually separated them from the laity. A few centuries later, the cassock was regulated to be the color black and it was during this time period that the white collar came into existence. According to the Church of England, the clerical collar was invented by the Reverend Dr. Donald MacLeod, who was a Presbyterian minister in Glasgow. Now others reference Reverend Henry MacLeod, no relation, uh, his book called Clerical Dress and Insignia of the Roman Catholic Church. There, Reverend Henry said the Roman collar was, quote, nothing else than the shirt collar turned down over the cleric's everyday common dress in compliance with the fashion that began toward the end of the 16th century. Unquote. The quote supports the argument that the clerical collar came from the Roman Catholic Church, hence the term the Roman collar. As the years progressed, different variations of the Roman collar were developed and Protestants developed their own traditions to distance themselves from the church. However, it is believed that a Protestant minister in the 19th century invented the modern day removable collar and it was further popularized by the Oxford movement at the time. Early Catholicism, you see that they were putting on uh, the, the cassocks, they were putting on the cassocks, then it got to a point where they had to use um, cotton, cotton to just identify who they are. Now, we, still people use the cotton though, but now it's more of, of plastic. So you read and you say that Pope, Pope uh, this Sylvester and in the fourth century, they started using these things. And then during the Reformation, Luther and his friends also came up and then the Anglican Church also popularized it and made sure that these are the vestments. It was invented by the Anglican Church in 1840 uh, as a symbol of separation of the clergy from the secular world. So when someone saw uh, uh, an Anglican priest in clerical color, it communicated their sanctification and separation from the secular. And that's how come the clerical color came into focus. Spiritually, it has become a representative of a priest's consecration to God and his role as someone set aside for priestly service. Some priests or ministers see it as a symbol of their slavery to God, showing the world who their true master is. There should be <clears throat> clear distinction between secular ministers like maybe minister of uh, health or whatever and minister of god into say yen fa bibisa enfamra nenye identification 
So the idea pan for clerical color the air for identification. Wearing of clerical, their color is very very important by the people of God, by the clergymen, by the reverend ministers, uh, bishops, right reverend. Uh, apostles, prophets, pastors, the mark and the sign to be identified in the clerical. I'm not Catholic. I'm not Anglican. I'm in a Reformed church where clerical collars generally have not been very popular over the last couple of centuries at least. Uh, why would that be something I'd want to do? Uh, there a couple of reasons for that. The general reason uh, and a more specific reason for the particular kind of uh, the particular kind of garb that uh, ministers wear. The general reason has to do with clothing and the biblical theology of clothing. Clothing is a manifestation of office. Uh, clothing is a, a sign of a position in the world, a position in society. Um, there are certain places where we think uniforms are important because they manifest a certain office. And uh, that's a, a general reason for uh, pastors to wear some kind of uh, distinguishing uniform to distinguish them as representatives of the church, as representatives of Jesus Christ, just as the judge is a representative of the state, uh, the police, the policeman is also a representative of state power. Uh, uh, a pastor should rep be representative and should show that in his clothing. It's the I, one of the identity and the uniqueness of the vocation or profession. Uh, we all know that uh, the three main uh, professions that, class of, that is classified as the origins of professions are the medicals, the medical doctors, the lawyers, and then the priests. And these three being the foundation needed an identity. And... Uh, something to to wear so that as they move around you could see that yeah that is a priest or oh, that is a doctor or oh, that is a lawyer that is fundamental but you are looking at the priest or the minister or the pastor uh, we also take our roots from scripture where you are looking at god and his dealings with humanity and how he made available people who would stand in between the people and God. And these were the priests. And when you take the priest, the uh, tribe or the family, the tribe of Israel, it is within uh, Aaron's group, Aaron. And so God in Exodus chapter 28 made a very uh, significant declaration as to what the priest should wear to identify them. Have Aaron your brother brought to you from among the Israelites along with his sons Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar, Itamar, so they may serve me as priests. Make sacred garments for your brother Aaron to give him dignity and honor. Tell all the skilled workers to whom I have given wisdom in much matters that they are to make garments for Aaron for his consecration so he may serve me as priest. These are the garments they are to make, a breastplate, an effort, a robe, a woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. They are to make these sacred garments for your brother Aaron and his sons, so they may serve me as priests. Have them use gold and blue, purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen. That is Exodus chapter 28 verses 1 through 5. And so for the church 
having its roots in the uh, priesthood of Aaron and all that, and coming into the New Testament, we also needed an identity. And as you have heard here, it is for honor. Right. So these are the roots and the foundations. But you find that uh, nowadays we don't go back to those, uh, apart from some churches or some denominations that are still using these ones. We have come to a simplified way. But if you see someone wearing the collar, one, it is for identity. Two, it is for honor because you see him as a priest, a man uh, after God's heart or who is uh, the one standing in before between the people and God. Some also see it as uh, an, a sign of subservience that you are under some control it's it's like putting a yoke you say we have two two types which this one is the sleeping very simple one then we have the full one which more or less looks like a shackle so you are telling god that look i am obedient to you and i am under your control so that you can use me and you can uh, send me anywhere. The collar remains a distinctive sign of the priest's availability and the permanent nature of holy orders. The priest is not his own and is a visible sign of Jesus Christ present in the midst of everyday life, ready to reconcile sinners and bring souls back to God. For a long time, pastors have worn uh, uh, uniforms that have some distinctive kind of collar. The reason for that is it represents slavery. Um, pastors and ministers are slaves of Jesus Christ, as Paul repeatedly says, and the collar is a, a stylized slave collar. It indicates that we aren't our own, we don't speak for ourselves, we speak for Christ. Uh, a minister is not supposed to simply be expressing his own opinions, his collar is a reminder to himself that he's supposed to speak the word of Christ as it comes to him through scripture and communicate that to the people of God and to the world. The basic essence is uh, as a symbol to, to, to show who belongs to the, the, the clerical ministry. Okay. So, the white color nature of the clerical means the wearer must have a pure heart and mind. It is white and it must reflect on the actions and words of the pastor wearing it as Philippians 2 admonishes us to let the same mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus. We know that if someone is wearing the clerical, he has been set apart and has a pure conscience. Some time ago, when a pastor gets to a bus station when traveling, they are led by the station master to take a front seat, unlike today. Though it's a plastic, yet it identifies you as a representative of God. Its symbolic nature means the wearer carries power and authority, hence the reverence from people. That also doesn't mean when you buy it, you share in the same anointing as the man of God. No. But symbol and then also identification according to Runa. The color is always white. We have not seen or in in uh, church history or in the history of vestments for priests, we have not come across any color of the uh, color being uh, other than white. Yeah. And it's white because it is always mostly worn with with a black shirt so that it comes out and some explanation that is giving is that this is a dark sinful world and god's word is light god's word brings healing and brings 
deliverance into communities. So even though we live in a world that is so dark, God comes in and that is the light that the priest wears to bring it in. So whatever shirt is worn, it is a white collar that is put in, either a sleeping or a sit-in or the dog uh, collar. Understanding the symbol and significance of putting on the clerical collar, who then qualifies to wear the clerical collar? And does the Bible support wearing the collar? We don't have any any reference in scripture apart from the garment things that i read from the old testament no there is nothing like that again i come to church history and uh, what has been our traditions over the years in in the study of things there is a word called adiaphora adiaphora means things that god has not forbidden or commanded for instance does god want us to use wristwatch that is an adiaphora does God want us to give birth to two children or ten children? That's an adiaphora. In other words, it is a gray area. It does not go against God uh, in any way. Uh, so if it will enhance uh, the order of things and to bring glory to His Son, Jesus Christ, and then we can do it with a free conscience. Elder. Anthony Kofi Ankoma, he deals in clerical colors. Apart from just the shirt, the clerical itself, he's into it. So we are here with him uh, to understand from the seller's point, from the vendor's point, what the clerical color is, how it helps, the types, and all the experiences he can share with us. I'm going to store shirts. I'm black, I'm fine. I'm going to make a pair of back. I sometimes purchase a store shirt or a material and do alteration works for the purpose of that. Most of what the pastors wear is sewn by me. Others also have their own way of making it look official. The shirt can be worn by anyone, but the moment the clerical color is attached, it makes it a revered outfit, symbolizing light in darkness. It defines the role of a priest, as stated in Genesis 1. Kakakolano, the infant said, I suffer nation. Nama, we ye crack and moon fimudia will be at the mission, but Kaleka and the important. During the time of late Apostle Acha, he used to visit me a lot. He even suggested that people who come to purchase must be asked of their license, since its purpose is more spiritual. These things must be demanded. I saw it to several priests within the country. Not only the Church of Pentecost, Apostolic, Church of Christ, Assemblies of God, they love my work, so they always chose me to sew for them. I did lots of designs for the late Anoyabua for broadcasting varieties of colors because I am a designer and these works involve creating words. Black is my frequent handwork most of the times. It is normally worn during ordination and it's used by most of the churches. Sea blue is also another good color. Every church has its own color. I sew the vest also. You can wear anything under the vest and it makes you simple. Be it singlet, round neck or v-neck. You have to wear the vest and lock it at the back. It can also be hung in the car. And according to what I heard, Apostle Intumi during his time in Liberia encouraged the priest to buy them and hang it in their cars for good reasons. It's very easy. It's very easy because it has sizes. Okay. Yes, uh, especially it's, it's your shirt size that you go in. Uh, in fact, if you go to the, the, the shops, the vestments, the clerical shops, uh, they have sizes. So you look at your neck size. If it's 15, 16, 17, 18, whatever, you just buy and then it fits you. Then the round collar, which sometimes is called the dog collar, that one too has sizes. Yes, yeah, so you go and then you look at what uh, size it is and your neck size, then you pick it. 
then you put it on your shirt and you are ready to go. Yeah. If you don't get the right size and you go for a smaller one, you 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 you'll be very uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable. And uh, you, you cannot even preach. Open design and so to say be a person design. There are also designs for it. We do any type of design per how you want it. It is not commonly here in Accra, but we come out with the best ideas to work on them professionally. We can also convert shirts into official clerical shirts for your liking. <laughs> Say ye green and say yellow, and I will share to be so near your quality now. Per se, we seem to say Kerika strong one to in one Kerika with a bouncer and also meet me. I am. So this is uh, this one is not official, unofficial. Of course, Pastor Kavna <laughs> Mante. Uh, uh. The whites conceived the idea and created it. We are imitating from their invention. The only difference is the material to accommodate the size of the wearer. This is very bright. Some have buttons, unlike this. This is fine, and without buttons can be used. Plastic no more here, but here only a limited pan size. In TSC, I na how much they are also Korean one. Good. Uh huh. We we know what she went to be a home material where you're almost oh a different material. Uh huh. And then, uh, I'm so proud to be a show. Oh, yeah, so be an unquabashe. I shall see be an honor and air dinka crab, but oh, yeah, yeah. And as a main shell long sleeves in here. Yeah. So now me share the usual long sleeves. I say we no bright eh 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 bright up. I want share now. I want say. Come now, man. It will be a while. You need to button my man. Okay. Open say you need to button my man. I meet him here. You need to button. I didn't see him. Okay. And about we no eh fine. Then when you see Kurana, you can even use it. The Church of Pentecost Circles. Um, if one is called into ministry, he comes in as a probationary overseer. Uh, his work is assessed for about two years and then he is confirmed as a full overseer. All this while, he does not have the clerical color. So about another three or four years, uh, it can be minimum, uh, the person is ordained or called into the pastorate. He is ordained and that is the time that the person is giving the clerical color. And one of the major work that he will start doing as an ordained minister is to officiate uh, marriages. Those denominations that are liturgical, they understand whoever is wearing what color of shirt. Right? Uh -huh. So that if it's black, it can be worn by any, any pastor or any priest. But the moment it moves into purple, right, then you are getting into bishops. Uh -huh, or cardinals that's that's when it starts moving then then you can have the color of blue you can those ones are also worn by all others Every, anyone can wear it but the difference is where you see it turning into purple or into mauve once you see a mauve shirt for a priest or a pastor, then it means he is either a bishop, an archbishop, or a cardinal. Yeah. Uh, when you go to the, the Catholic uh, denomination, you see that the Pope is always in white. His, everything about him is white because he is the, uh, the head. Yeah. His skull cap, his uh, cassock, everything is white. But you come to cardinals and you see that you have some red strippings, meaning that these are cardinals, these are. And then when you come to the Anglican Church, it's the same. The, the bishops, archbishops will wear the mauve or the purple color to show that these are. And then the others can wear uh, the blue, the, the, the ash, then, 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 then the black. That's, that's it. Uh, for us here in the Methodist Church, 
we have added another color to it meaning that there are there is the traditional black ash blue or whatever worn by all then we have those who are what we call superintendent ministers superintendent ministers are in charge of circuits or who have attained a certain age in ministry after ordination yeah let's say you have uh, 10 years after ordination then you are made a very reverend and the moment we give you that title very reverend you wear green for us the presiding bishop the administrative bishop and all the bishops we also wear uh, this color yeah so that the moment i step out and everybody sees me and and these are the traditional colors of the the church despite the sound teaching and conventions adopted years ago in the wearing of the clerical collar there are still some misunderstandings that exist around wearing the collar this has a can you know, gone are the days where men of god after bible school training applied the word of god with the aim of saving the lost it's totally different today a lot of so-called bible school scholars receive training for six months and one year they wear color defining themselves as pastors the john wesley's and mckeon's dispensation was full of dedication and hard work to the service of god unlike today to be honest they were the clerical based on food and favors Yes, you know, sir, they before say they be bored. People who want to be pastors must first be willing to undergo training for years so they can be instilled with the fear of the Lord through God's word. That's what I know. Unlike today, the young ones follow some pastors for a short time and out of envy, they also come out as pastors wearing clerical. How they present the word is very frustrating. Clerical, no. I had the idea of one thing. She said, I don't know, cry. The clerical is sold in stores today, so these young followers acquire some for their office. Gone are the days where there was total reverence for people wearing the clerical. It's different today. My respect is reserved for a few. They are the reason why sin is widespread in our days. The establishment of Bible schools has been very easy, so people admit these boys and in six months' time, they are done with the course and establish their own church. After school, they purchase a clerical and call themselves pastors. Clericals are supposed to be worn by the matured because the apostolic fathers believe that pastors are people set apart from the ordinary and they can be identified through the wearing of the clerical. How can we as a people address these misunderstandings and concerns? I will, as, as a church historian, and a Wesleyan theologian, I would say that it boils down to going back to read our history as a church. You see, uh, if you know all these things, then you begin to appreciate, you begin to understand why people are doing what they are doing. People are wearing what they are wearing. If I go to a Catholic uh, service and see how the priest has dressed. I understand it because that is the vestment. That is how they should dress. Uh, going to a, a Presbyterian or going to a Methodist or going to a Pentecost church, I know how they dress. The, some can come in their ties, some can come in their collar. I understand. Okay. And so I revere it. I see it as something that the church recognizes and identifies with, that the, the, those who stand in between the people and God, this is their dressing. All right. For us, sometimes 
if as I sit here, as I sit here, a priest or one of our ministers should come in uh, without the collar, we make a joke that he's naked because he's not properly dressed. He's not properly dressed. Unless it is a casual meeting for which we say, oh, you can come in. And, and the lawyers are very particular about that. Very, very particular. In fact, you can't go to court as a lawyer dressed shabbily without your wig, without your... You'll be driven away. The same thing. So, people should not see it as, oh, where they say in your Eye bibi. Eye bibi. Because that is your identity. That is what identifies you. And that is what makes you uh, acquire the status for which you can be acknowledged reverend or pastor or whatever or a bishop. The clerical collar indeed may be just a mere clothing, but on a minister, a priest, a pastor or a man of God ordained, it becomes more than just a piece of clothing. It speaks more loudly than any words and clearly identifies clergy members. We've seen some very revered men of God who sometimes preaching and the rest, they are not in color, but they are wearing the normal attire. Does it take anything away from their service? I would say no, it doesn't. It doesn't, because we have this adage uh, who says that uh, the robe does not make the monk, right? Uh -huh. So it, it doesn't take away anything. It doesn't at all. Once you see, once the, that denomination recognizes that it's a proper dressing for a priest or for a pastor, I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay, but if for for us here, uh, the Methodists, let me use the Methodists. Our rule is that if, if you are an ordained priest, you wear the collar and the preaching bands. You wear the preaching bands to preach. All right. So if I come in and I see that it's just the collar and no preaching bands, I have to find out why no preaching bands. And then you have to wear a cassock. You, you can't just ordinarily go to preach in suit. It should be in cassock. Uh -huh. So if I come and it's in, maybe it's just a casual service, uh, five minutes thing, or a one week celebration for which it doesn't need anything, then that one is allowed. Or we can even announce that this service will allow ministers to come in suit but apart from that all other services of the church you should be in cassock spiritually it has become the representative of a priest consecration to god and his role as someone set apart to priestly service <music>